Proudly we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the chaplain service of the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Officer Who Never Gives Orders. This is the story of the man with the crosses or scrolls on his collar. The man who stands as pastor, counselor, and friend to the fighting men of your armed forces. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, here is an important message that concerns all the young men and young women of America. If you know radios, telephones, motors, or if you're experienced in any other technical skills, you are needed in the United States Army. Your expert knowledge and know-how is just as essential to the Army as is the man with the gun. You'll be an important member of the team. For the high school graduate thinking about a future career, this is a must. You can begin immediately training for a highly skilled position and a vigorous, active life. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. They'll help you to decide where you're needed most. You'll be proud of your part in assuring the future security of our country. If you're interested in more information, see your Army recruiter today. Now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Officer Who Never Gives Orders. The Army encourages its men to think and act on their own. But the soldier can become too independent, so self-reliant that he gets himself in trouble. And that's just where Private First Class George Bennett seems to be headed, into trouble. George! Hey, George, change the record or give us a real break and lay off! Oh, leave him be, Paul. Ah, he's giving me the willies. Why can't he play something cheerful? The man don't feel cheerful. You're telling me? Two weeks now, he's been making like he lost his last friend. If he keeps on like that, he's going to lose him. Well, Tommy? Sorry, George. Nothing for you. You sure? No letters? Not even a postcard? No. I checked the mailroom detail myself. George. What? It's like I said. You have to write him to get him. Now, how's where you're sitting down right now? Yeah, I'll think about it. George, don't just think about it. Ah, save your breath, Tommy. These days, George only hears when he wants to. He don't listen to nobody. Look, Paul, if that's the way the man wants it... That's how he wants it. In this corner, fighting George Bennett. In the other, the rest of Charlie Company. Look, if you don't like it, Paul, Me? you know what... Me? Yeah, I love it. I only hope you'll act that tough when it counts. Next month in a divisional boxing championship. Don't start that again. George, you can take the heavyweight title easy. All you got to do is get back to work like you were before. Yeah, yeah. Look, Steve, will you be a good Joe and get him out of here, huh? Uh, sure, sure thing. Come on, guys. Okay, okay. Come and tell me. There's something I want to talk to you about. Army or personal? A little of both. Okay. So long, George. Thanks for the coke, Tommy. Oh, sure, Paul. Now, what's on your mind? Uh, George Bennett. Isn't there something you could do? You know, to snap him out of here. Me? What can I do? What do you mean? You're the chaplain's assistant, aren't you? Oh, sure, but, Paul, I can't go around straightening guys out. My job's mostly helping the chaplain with his paperwork. I'm a clerk. And maybe you could talk to the chaplain for us. Look, I don't get it, Paul. George Bennett isn't the only man on the post who gets the blues now and then. He's the only one in Charlie Company with a chance to be heavyweight champ of the division, or the First Army even, maybe. Uh, that means a whole lot to Paul, Tommy. Charlie Company, I mean. 
That's our company, ain't it? Uh -huh. Look, I've been knocking myself out every night after duty hours, helping get the team in shape, and, and that big ox has been dogging it. He's a, he's a sure thing to win, but only if he's, if he's feeling right, if his mind's on what he's doing. Tommy, how about it? Oh, you mean speak to the chaplain? I don't know, Paul. Chaplain Green's an A-number one guy, but he can't help George if George doesn't want to be helped. Nobody can. Speak to the chaplain, Tommy. Not for George, so much for, for Charlie Company. For the championship, you mean. All right, I will. <laughs> Tommy, almost finished with that letter? Yes, Chaplain, just about. Here. Here you are, sir. Thank you. I always like to get my letters off to the family the same day the new man reports to the post. Yes, sir. It meant a lot to my folks hearing from you when I checked in. Yeah, it's the last of the letters, by the way. Well, anything else on my schedule before I start my personal counseling? No, sir, but you have a busy day after that. Uh, chaplain's meeting at division headquarters at 4. Did you confirm that with Chaplain Levine and Father O'Neill? Yes, sir. They'll pick you up here at 3.50. Oh. And then at 4.30, you have a conference on the recreational program. And at 5, you're due at the hospital for visits in Ward B. And tonight, uh, the midweek worship service? That's right, sir. Mm -hmm. Hey, you'll be glad to know the new hymn books came in on schedule. Good. Well, uh, if I'm all cleaned up now, let's move ahead with the interviews. Who's the first man? PFC George Bennett. I spoke to you about him yesterday, sir. Remember? Oh, yes. Uh, so does his company commander. Potential problem of morale. Well, let's hope we can keep it potential. Uh, you have Bennett's file for me? It's on your desk, sir. Oh, yes. I'd, I'd like a moment to look it over again to get it fresh in my mind. Yes, sir. Uh, just buzz me when you want him. A and Chaplain Green. Yes, Tommy? What is it? Uh, sir, I... I know you always do your best, you know, to straighten guys out. I try, Tommy. I know, sir. But in this case, you would like me to uh, kind of bear down a bit, is that it? Yes, sir. You see, this George Bennett's a good guy, Chaplain, honest. You help him get organized, like he used to be, I mean, you'll really be doing something. Why, Tommy? Why are you so concerned about Bennett? Well, it's in the file, sir, part of it. You see, we're both from Charlie Company, Bennett and me, and the guys outside. You can see him out the window over there. Oh? Paul Moran and Steve Connor? Yes, sir. Paul's the one that asked me to talk to you about Bennett. And Steve kind of had to talk Bennett into keeping this appointment with you. What's the problem, Tommy? Well, Paul and Steve argue about a lot of things, but this isn't one of them. They sure are hoping you can help Bennett. You too, huh? That's right, sir. Well, I'll do my best, Tommy. Give me a minute with a file and then send him in. Yes, sir. And, Tommy, uh, tell Moran to stop pacing up and down out there. <laughs> that won't help anybody, least of all me. Paul, oh, you're walking yourself into a hole in the ground there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't you take it easy like me? Huh? Because I'm worried about that big lug, that's why. Might uneasy myself. You don't look it. You look as if you don't have a thing on your mind except chow. It ain't so. Only thing is, where I come from, a man don't let on when he's worried. Yeah? Well, where I come from, a guy does something about it. What's worrying him, I mean. Can't do anything more about it now, can you? It's up to the chaplain. That's what's given me the jitters. The chaplain knows his business. I remember the time I he... know, I know, I know. Chaplain's okay, plenty okay. Then what's the trouble? Why are you talking up a storm? Kind of George. He's acting up so I... I wouldn't put it past him to let one go at the chaplain. Oh, man wouldn't do a thing like that. No. Maybe not where you come from. But that boy of ours is spoiling for an argument. I think the chaplain's gonna give him one George ain't gonna like. <laughs> So let's get that much straight, Bennett. I'm not going to argue with you. You're not? Well, that's a switch, sir. Well, you're a grown man. And according to your record, you've learned the difference between what's right and what's wrong a long time ago. That's true, isn't it? Yes, sir. 
It's also true that you're in some kind of trouble or think you are, right? Look, Chaplin, don't get me wrong, but I'm in the toughest spot of my life. And, and you just assume I didn't make it any tougher? Well, I know you wouldn't mean to. The way I see it, your job is to help guys, but there are some guys nobody can help, only themselves. And you're one of them, Bennett? You sure of that? Sir, I got myself into this mess. I'll have to get myself out. Well, that sounds good, Bennett, but uh, I think you're wrong on two counts. Yes, sir. For one thing, I'm not so sure it's a mess. I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be a perfectly normal, everyday situation. A, a misunderstanding of some kind, perhaps. Yeah, some misunderstanding. And second, I don't think you got into this situation by yourself, as you say. I think you had some help. What do you mean by that? Well, you didn't get married all by yourself, did you? Besides your wife, a minister of your own faith was involved, wasn't he? Yeah, sure, that's right. Wait a minute. How did you know I was having trouble with my wife? Your record, George. It's one of the best I've ever seen. You don't drink, don't gamble. You're not in any money trouble. And you used to be the most popular man in Charlie Company. So what could it be except trouble at home? Yeah. Okay, you're right. Would you like to tell me about it? Well... You've heard it before. Big guy marries pretty little girl. She's just a kid, really. I ought to have my head examined, thinking anybody looks like that would stick by a guy like me. Out of sight, out of mind. What makes you so sure of that? Well, look at me, Chaplin. Now, take a look at Mary. Here's a picture. Oh. A wedding picture, hmm? Yeah. She certainly is a beauty. Yeah. Of course, pictures can lie, but... I'd say this one shows two people very much in love with each other. Yeah, but as you also said, pictures can lie. We've been married less than a year. I spent a week back home with her only two months ago, and now I haven't heard a word from her for almost a month. And you haven't any idea why? Any idea? I know she walked out on me. I'm not making this up, Chaplin. I telephoned her three nights in a row. No answer. Well, possibly she'd left town to visit some relatives. Yeah, without letting me know? Uh, uh, almost a month? George... There has to be some logical explanation. Yeah, you bet there is, and I'm going to find out. If I can't get in touch with her by mail or by phone, I'll go... Well, I'll figure out some way. George, uh, I won't presume to tell you what to do about Mary, but you do have a first-rate army record. Now, think twice before you do anything to spoil it. I'd like to help you. No, thanks. Perhaps if I were to write to me... I don't want you to do that. You're sure? Look, Chaplin, I, I don't mean to get out of line, but don't write to her, please. Very well, I won't. But, George, I want you to do something for me. Yeah, what? Before you decide to take any direct action yourself, I want you to come to see me. Is that clear? You mean that's an order, sir? George... I'm the one officer attached to your outfit who can't give an order, not on a matter like this. I'm just asking for your promise. Well, you won't write to Mary? No, George. Okay, it's a deal. I'll come to see you. <laughs> Listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Officer Who Never Gives Orders. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the Army. You'll see a change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You'll not only stand straighter and taller, you'll walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Your training in the Army will give you the confidence of a man with an important job to do. You have to pass the mental and physical examinations in order to get in this oldest military service in our country. But once you're in, you're on the way up. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who'll be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Officer Who Never Gives Orders.
In the courtyard outside the office of Chaplain Frederick Green, two soldiers are waiting anxiously for their buddy, George Bennett. Hey, Paul, there's George now, checking out a G-building. Where? Uh-uh. He don't look so good. Hey, man, maybe you were right. Maybe the chaplain did give George a hard time. I'm afraid he gave the chaplain a hard time. Hey, Georgie, over this way. Georgie, over this way. Georgie! You gotta talk to him, Paul. Better go after him. We got something there. Come on. All right, what do you guys want? Yes. Want to talk to you, that's all. Hold it. No, look, I got things to do. All right, all right. Maybe Steve and I could help you do them. Yeah? yeah sure, George. That is, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. I'm just heading over to the gym. Hey, Jim? Figured I ought to start getting back into shape. You mean for the tournament? Oh, boy, George, now you're talking. Yeah, you see, Paul? Told you the chaplain get George to see it the right way. Hey, he's a great guy, eh, George? The chaplain? Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. But he didn't say nothing about me getting back in shape. That was my idea. And not for the tournament. What, what do you mean, George? Didn't the chaplain straighten things out for you? Well, he tried. I'll give him that. But all that did was prove to me I've got to straighten things out for myself. And that's what I want to get back in shape for. So when I go home, if that's what I've got to do, I'm going to be able to take care of things. And take care of them my way. <laughs> Well, that winds up the little fellas, don't it, Paul? Uh-huh. Now comes a big stiff. Our own George Bennett. He's going to spar with Frank Nelson. Frank will murder him. What are you talking about? George is back in training again. Or... Yeah, but not on account of the tournament next Saturday. It's a week from today, you know. All right, all right. You all set, Bennett? Yes, Coach. How about you, Nelson? Yeah, 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 I'm ready, Coach. All right. Make it a regulation around. Three minutes. Time. What did I tell you, Steve? He couldn't hit Nelson with a baseball bat. All out of shape. Keepers, George sure looks bad. Ah, no time and that kind of fighter. He has something on his mind. He can't get rid of it. Brother, this is murder. Yeah, good thing, maybe. Knock some sense into him. Yeah, more likely to make him more ornery. More ornery. All right, that's all. That's all. That's set up. That's all. Oh, right. For Pete's sake, what do they want, blood? Be glad the coach stopped it. Come on, Paul. Where to? The man's our buddy, isn't he? Let's lend him a hand. Gosh, the things I do for Charlie Company. How you feeling, George? Okay, okay. Yeah, don't you worry, George. You, you'll get your timing back. Yeah. Sure, George. Another couple of workouts. Why, you'll be tagging boys like Nelson easy. I had all the workouts I need. Yeah? Yeah. And I had all the advice I need, too, from the chaplain and from the chaplain's assistants and from you guys. Oh, now, take it easy, George. Easy, man. I'm through taking it easy. I've been sitting here when I should have been 500 miles away. Uh, doing what? Never mind. But whatever it is, I'm on my way to start doing it. <laughs> Yeah, the big jerk. That's what he is, a, a big pig-headed jerk. Well, that don't help much, calling him names. Now, you got any better ideas? Now, look, tell me, tell me one thing we can do to head him off, and I'll do it. Well, will you try talking to him again? Tell him how it'll look to the rest of the boys. I'm hoarse from telling them. Well, we can't just sit here and let him take off like that. They won't never come back. Yeah, hey, he'll come back. The MPs will bring him back. A big jerk will wind up in front of a general court, catch himself... Ten years, maybe. Are you going to let that happen to George Bennett? Ain't you going to do nothing? Look at me. Wait till I get out from behind this table. All right, now go on. Take a good look. All right, I'm looking. Now, dripping wet, I weigh 145. You know what George weighs? 200. No, that don't mean you couldn't try to stop him. No. You want to wind up in Ward B? And you try it. Uh, hey, Steve, come on back here. I was only kidding. Well, I'm not. I'm going to give it a try. George. Hey, 
Georgia. Yeah, I'm packing. What do you want? Nothing. But if you're taking off now, I, I want to say goodbye. That's all. I, only I'm hoping maybe you'll stick. Look, Steve, I told you, keep clear of this. But you're doing the wrong thing, man. All right, you won't have to worry about it much longer. We've been buddies quite a spell now, George. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, here, catch. Your harmonica? Yeah. I don't want it, George. No, you're a good Joe, Steve. I want you to have it. Here. I said I didn't want it. All right, all right. So be a hard nose. Hey, George, I checked on the mail for you. Here. Huh? Wait a minute, what do you mean? You got something for me? Yeah. Well, let me have it. Yeah, it's typewritten. Well, open it up, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. How would I like to subscribe to an exciting new magazine, Army Love Tales? <laughs> On a level? Hey, that's a high Yeah, point. yeah, that's very funny. I'm sorry, George. The same here. Well, everybody's sorry for me. That's a big help. Well, you guys can stop feeling sorry for me. Yeah, maybe he's right, Steve, at that. Maybe we better start feeling sorry for ourselves because Charlie Company's gonna look pretty sick. Count of you, George. Yeah? Hey, George. Oh, what, Tom, what is this? Is everybody ganging up on me here? I don't know what you're talking about. No, well, then what do you want? Cool off. I'm just delivering a message. Chaplain Green wants to see you pronto. Yeah, the word gets around awful fast on this post. Who blew the whistle on me? You, Paul, or you, Steve? I never blew no whistle on nobody in my life. Are you kidding? Look, George, the chaplain wants to see you right away. He said you'd understand why. I understand, all right. He double-crossed me. Yes? AFC Bennett to see you, sir. Oh, good. Uh, send him in. And hold all calls, please, will you? Yes, sir. Well, sit down, George. I'd rather not, sir. Angry at me, too? You didn't have to send your assistant to get me, sir. I promised you I'd check in with you before I decided to do anything. I didn't know you'd decided. You didn't? Well, all right, all right, I have. I know I'm gonna look yellow to a lot of guys. I know I'm spoiling my record. But you're still doing it. That's right. You don't have to, you know. You can go with permission. Here's your pass. Go on, take it. Is this... this pass for me? Mm -hmm. George, when I found out what the situation actually was back in Pittsburgh, I had a talk with your company commander. He said you could take three days. Now, wait a minute, you promised me you wouldn't get in touch with Mary. I didn't. I kept my word, George. Well, then how did you find out? Well, there was a third party involved in your marriage, George, your pastor, remember? I got in touch with him. Oh. Well... Chaplain, what, what did he tell you? You married a wonderful girl, George. I don't think Mary would ever accuse you of running off with another woman. She would... Well, then where did she go? To Good Samaritan Hospital. What? She's all right, George, now. She got both hands burned in a cooking explosion. Pastor Lawrence tells me they're healing fine. There won't be any scars. I just had him on the phone. Well, why, why didn't she let me know? Seems she didn't want to worry. Uh, crazy little fool. Because of the boxing tournament, George. She told Pastor Lawrence that you'd be worrying about her and that would throw off your timing. <laughs> what a girl. Look, Chaplain, hmm? you, you, you sure she's okay? Oh, yes. She's being discharged from the hospital tomorrow, but uh, you'll be able to see for yourself. Now, there's a plane out tonight that'll get you to Pittsburgh in three hours. Sir, I... I, I, I don't know how to thank you. That's all right, George. Only, I, I wonder if you'll... if you'll think I'm nuts if I don't use this pass. Well, why not? Well, if the only reason Mary didn't... Let me know about the accident was she wanted me to make a good showing in the fights. I think that's what I ought to do. What do you think? You don't need me to tell you what to do, George. <laughs> You've been doing fine for me so far, but... Okay, I'll take over for myself now. You say Mary's at the Good Samaritan in Pittsburgh? Until tomorrow. All right, I'll send her some flowers and a wire telling her not to worry about me anymore. 
And thanks again, Chaplin. <laughs> I think I hear? Yeah, but I don't believe it either. Well, I'll be. <laughs> it is the big ape himself. <laughs> Hiya, guys. How are you? Well, what happened? Did Chaplin stop you? Yeah, in a way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What'd he do? Uh, order you confined to the post? No, no. You know better than that, Paul. Chaplins never give orders. He just got to the bottom of what was bothering me so I could think straight. Which meant sticking right here. I'm mighty proud to hear that, George. Thanks, Steve. Look, guys, I'm sorry I blew my top before. Only be right for you to be sore at me. Hey, you think I'm clear out of my mind? I don't want no trouble with the next heavyweight champion of the First Army. Yeah, yeah. you can say that again. No kidding. You guys think I still have a chance? Ah, if you'll get yourself in shape, you can't, George. If you really work at it. Well, how about it? Will you guys let me a hand? Hey, you big gorilla. What's everybody been trying to do for you? From the chaplain on down. The story you've just heard is based on the actual day-to-day -day work of the chaplain service of the United States Army. The officers who never give orders. America's finest men re-enlist in the United States Army. Take advantage now of the U.S. Army's career guidance program that gives you planned advancement. Men with prior Army service may now enlist directly for the infantry, field artillery, armor, Corps of Engineers, or the anti-aircraft artillery. You can go up fast in one of these crack action teams. You'll get well-planned schooling to speed you on your way, and promotions will depend on your skill and all-around efficiency. Moreover, if you've been out less than two years, you may be eligible to re-enlist in an attractive grade. Check with your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiter for full career details. He'll advise you on the many personal and financial benefits of service when you re-enlist in any branch of our modern army. Remember, if you're a veteran of the United States Army, you can choose your branch of service when you re-enlist. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.